Good day and welcome back to another DBZ Doke Metal video. In this video, we are going to take a look at the Extreme Z Awakening for the AGL Borgos unit. So this is a pretty dope unit. Uh, obviously, one of the Team Bardock units. Uh, you know, basically that recently got their EZA as part of the Team Bardock Extreme Z Area Edition. So. Borgos is pretty solid. Um, he looks really, really decent. Low class warriors, category lead, 77%. Not that that matters much. Greatly raises attack and defense for one turn, which is pretty good, and causes supreme damage to the enemy with a high chance of stunning them. He also has attack and defense of 150%, with an additional attack and defense of 100% when facing only one enemy. Launches an additional super attack when facing more, two or more enemies high chance of performing a critical hit when your team has another team bardock category ally attacking in the same turn so something that is pretty cool here is obviously the fact that he's got a really nice passive that's good in a lot of situations launching additional super attack when facing two or more enemies is pretty good high chance of performing a crit when another team bardock category ally is in the turn is a very achievable condition to get when you consider how many you know, how the Team Bardock units have all recently got their EZA and just how good the units are in general. Obviously, the 100% attack and defense when facing only one enemy does help out and greatly raising attack and defense on the super attack is pretty good. I think personally, uh, just taking a look at how everything is and how to build everything, I think building him full additional is still the best bet and then I think focusing on crit afterwards is good. You are more than likely going to have a team Bardock unit in every rotation he'll be in on all of his teams, just considering the great synergy that he has with you know, other team Bardock units. So I highly suggest that you build him full additional to take advantage of that massive 50% crit rate that he does have when alongside a team Bardock member. That means he also has the ability to triple super when facing two or more enemies and just overall I think is a better build for him defensively and performance wise. Now of course also in terms of link skills he's got team Bardock, same warrior race, same pride, same lineage in fighter prepared for battle and shattering the limit. And in terms of categories, he's on low class warrior, pure sands, team bardock, space traveling warriors, and storied figures. All so right. yeah, overall he looks really, really solid. Uh, in terms of links, as with most of the team bardock units, most of his links are really good. The only poor links I would say are team bardock, which you can only get with team bardock units. It's not a bad link, just obviously kind of restrictive. Then you have Sam Pride, which is an uncommon link, mainly with Vegeta units, Turles, uh, and other Team Bardock units. And then you have Infighter. Infighter being the only link he's not really going to be able to get with other Team Bardock units. Now right off the bat here, we can see he's got a hundred and something thousand, around 110,000 defense uh, facing multiple enemies, which is fine because this is the position in which he is weakest. Uh, obviously in terms of offensive output and rough defense. Now an important thing to take note of is that he will have a additional super attack here, which is obviously pretty strong. Uh, and then also, you know, he will be greatly raising his defense with both of those super attacks. So he does look incredibly solid overall uh, in terms of his outward kind of appearance and performance. Uh, in terms of raw defense, he's looking to have pretty decent defense uh, based off of obviously firing off two supers. He's going to have um, a pretty solid, uh, you know, like defensive you know, amount. He's going to have around close to the 200k mark in that situation. Now, of course, um, you know, in terms of everything else, um, I think for the most part, uh, that when it comes to structure and build those additionals are going to matter the most if you can get triple super attacks when he's facing three enemies uh, you're not really going to feel that kind of loss of defense that he does in his passive uh, it'll also help replace his offensive output because of obviously the fact that he'll have multiple crits um, and then he's also got obviously the ability to potentially stun the target a little bit more here we have some decent defense uh, again we're obviously facing only one enemy here 
And you can instantly see that the defense does, you know, shoot up immediately. We're looking at 160k, it's immediately a lot more. After he supers, he's going to have, you know, over 200k defense. It's very, very good. But obviously, the main issue being um, that essentially you are going to somewhat struggle um, with the notion that he may not get an additional de uh, yeah, attack. And that is going to be a little bit of an issue when it comes to his defense. I think additional supers really make his defense far better for in-game content. And so I think overall, I still just like his functionality with additionals. Defense will be better. You have multiple stun opportunities. This guy is really going to thrive in a kind of SBR, ESBR environment because that's where things are going to kind of be at their strongest. Uh, you know, a little bit of SBR and ESBR and he's going to have multiple opportunities to stun the enemy. A lot of control that he can provide uh, and good defense as well. Um, because of obviously his uh, you know, additionals, his crits that are built in, it's all very, very good. The fact that he gains strength uh, against a single enemy means that once you do eliminate them, he'll be a lot stronger. Here we can see that he has a very good defensive amount. We are obviously getting five out of these six links as well, which is pretty strong. So he's looking really, really, really solid. I like what he brings and I think he's a unit that you're going to be able to use in a lot of situations. I think he's going to be a very, very strong, like versatile unit that you can use for a lot of SBR and ESBR. I think he will drop off a little bit in the long form events. Um, still probably usable in the legendary Goku or the legendary Vegeta event, but I do think you are going to be a lot more concerned about his performance there. Uh, than you are in pretty much anything else. Like I think uh, overall you are going to be a little bit concerned for like how well he does. Uh, but that being said, he looks really, really solid. Uh, let's talk um, about his links and then we'll go from there. So in terms of his links, um, obviously as with most of the team Bardock units, he actually has a very strong link set. Uh, if you take a look, Shattering the Limit, very strong free to play key link prepared for battle very strong pure sands and hybrid sands key link sand lineage also very common amongst pure sands and hybrid sands sand warrior race also very common amongst standard base form sands uh, very often they have sand warrior race as a link and then you get to the three kind of controversial links well not controversial it's not controversial you get to the three more difficult links to implement Team Bardock is not necessarily difficult. It is only difficult if you want to avoid it in terms of a linking partner. It is absolutely advised to link this guy with other Team Bardock members because Team Bardock is an insanely powerful link, attack and defense of 10% and key plus two. And most Team Bardock members will also have Saiyan Pride, another one of those links that is somewhat difficult to get uh, and also features a 20% attack. If you are not interested in getting either of those links at the same time, then you are more than likely going to focus on Saiyan Pride as it's a 20% attack link that is very strong and is going to help you a lot more with linking with other Saiyan Pride units than it is going to be linking with essentially other Team Bardock units because that's basically uh, whereby it kind of ends like you need to link with team bardock units to get team bardock and by default you'll get sand pride whereas other way around is you won't necessarily get either now in terms of everything else uh, basically speaking uh, you know in fights is, is just not a very strong link uh, it's not one you're going to get very often there are very few units that do use it even fewer units that you'll find on your categories that use it so realistically, it's just not something I think is that important. It's more common on Join Forces uh, cards or Join Forces LR cards, and it's not really that strong. It's 15% attack, which is very good, but it doesn't give you key and it doesn't give you defense, which a lot of the other links do. So it's just not something that I would suggest uh, that you really run. It's not something that I would say you should focus on. Rather than that, let's just rather focus on, you yeah, the main link, Shadow the Limit, Prepared for Battle, etc. 
those are going to be what helps you the most those are going to be the absolute best links but yeah that is pretty much it when it comes to these units uh, obviously you can link them with the lr uh, int team bardock but i do suggest choosing one of the other eza team bardock members probably Tora or shugesh but that's it for me guys so if you enjoyed the video if you did leave a like or leave a comment and i'll try and reply back and i thank you guys so much for watching so take care stay safe and i'll see you guys in the next one until then bye